Hi guys, welcome to Alcan ADV. I'm your host, Liam Barry. Today we're going to talk about gear. Now I'm going to go into this in a few different stages. Uh, first of all, my jacket and pants. This is the uh, ARC Rocky Mountain Battleborn uh, gear. Came very highly recommended by many, many sources online. Uh, not the least of which was Everride. I'll put a link to his uh, video in the description if you want to check his video out. I have been extremely happy with it. So far, it's held up very well. The material is uh, excellent quality. The construction is superb. Everything seems uh, very good about it. Now, I've only ridden with it uh, in cooler temperatures, so I can't say um, how it does in the heat. Right now, I have the uh, zip-in lining in here. And, and it does fantastic. I've ridden down into the low 30s with this stuff and been okay. It's got a lot of vents on it and I'm pretty sure it's going to do pretty well in the heat too. Uh, according to a lot of sources online, reviews and whatnot, they seem to like it even down south where it gets hot. Now these things are a great deal uh, no matter who you are. The jacket goes for $199 and the pants for $149 on Rocky Mountain. I think that's pretty standard. The uh, collar snaps down in the open position. Uh, to get more airflow, I really like that. And the flap under the zipper is made so air and water can't blow in, which is pretty nice. It's got bicep vents and uh, this little ID pocket, which maybe not really useful, but it's there. Uh, it's got big patch pockets. I, I use these a whole lot. Uh, also, two back vents and a water bladder holder if you like that kind of thing. Uh, the lining zips in and it's also underneath it is mesh so if it's hot and you don't have the lining in that works. Uh, there's adjustments in the waist here as well, little interior pocket. The pants have an adjustable buckle, you can't really see it, um, but there's also this two cinches in the side which work pretty well. Uh, they've got two front pockets, uh, just normal pants pockets and also cargo pockets. And then there's these big, huge uh, thigh vents, which really move a lot of air uh, up into your, you know, nether regions and uh, also down the leg. It's, it's pretty nice. The lower leg unzips, but uh, not enough. I still have to take my boot off to get into it. It's not a real big deal, though. There's one more thing here worth mentioning. Uh, this stuff has D3 armor in the shoulders, elbows, and uh, knees, but also in the back. This does not have a foam pad on the back. This is D3 armor, which is seems to be kind of rare. There's a, you can always buy it aftermarket, but to have it stock on a jack is something that's not seen very often. Well, next we move to the helmet. This is the Scorpion uh, XO18950. It's a modular helmet, so I can eat or drink or whatever and, and uh, be able to keep the helmet on. I really like this helmet. I did my research before I got it, and uh, it's lived up to all my expectations. It's, it's fairly light for modular, and uh, among adventure helmets, a modular helmet with the peak, uh, the only other competition is the Arai, uh, I think it's an XD4. So I got that one all wrong. It's the Schuberth E1. Which is five or six hundred dollars. This thing comes in uh, brand new, not on sale for 270 something, which is a steal for what it's got. It's got the uh, flip down sun visor, which I am really liking. And uh, ventilation on it seems good. It's got on the chin here, it's got two uh, settings. So you open it halfway and it'll just vent the visor and open it all the way and it'll vent your face as well. And then there's also a uh, one big flipper uh, vent up in the top that seems to work fairly well. It doesn't work as well as the front here, but hey, if you really need air, I mean, look, you got air. Now I've got two pairs of gloves I've been wearing. Uh, these are my cold weather gloves, or uh, what I bought them for is, is uh, rain gloves because they're waterproof. These are originally designed to be snow machine gloves. Um, they've got the visor uh, wiper here, which I find to be very useful. Uh, they have a full leather palm, and I was a little bit worried about protection on these, but you know what? They are leather, and uh, so I'm really not that worried about it. There's a little bit of reflective here, you know, to add to your safety or whatever. 
The other gloves I've got are uh, just leather driving gloves and they're full leather uh, and they fit me well and I'm happy with them. They're nothing special. They're not uh, specific motorcycle gloves, but you know what? I like them and, and that's good enough for me. And the last thing we'll cover is boots. Uh, there's not a lot to cover here. I don't have my boots yet. I've been wearing some good leather boots that are just normal leather boots. They're not any kind of motorcycle boots and they don't offer optimal protection. But you know what? They're what I have and I do plan on getting a specific motorcycle boot before the trip. The boots I've got my eyes on are the uh, Forma Adventure Low. Uh, these are a fairly inexpensive motorcycle boot that seems to be a good combination between off-road uh, protection and on-road comfort. They are waterproof and by all accounts the reviews that I read are saying that they are actually waterproof instead of just uh, supposedly waterproof so we'll see how that goes. So that's about it for what I'm going to be wearing on the trip. Uh, I'm probably going to put out another video here in a little while about uh, the clothes I've got under this, the, the stuff that I'm going to be wearing as my street clothes. Um, and base layers and whatnot. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you've got something else to add. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have uh, very distinct preferences on gear and helmets and whatnot, so I'd love to hear uh, all about that. Anyway, we'll see you next week, and until then, you guys ride safe.